Day 9. Halloween, the classic, joined by Blonde. Sup? Right, Halloween. Blonde's never seen it before. I've seen it loads of times. I probably saw it about your age the first time, with my dad, so... <laughs> I'm waiting for you, mate. What do you want me to say? I want you to tell me what you thought of it. Sorry. Brilliant. This is what I want for the jingle on my podcast. It's going to be called John Bolton's podcast. So blonde, Halloween, what did you think? Give me the deets. Um do you want me to give Details. You? I like um I like the beginning. Right. Like the uh suspense. Yeah. And uh ask me part about parts of it and I will answer in a informal manner as best as I can begin. What did you think of the film? I, I liked it. I liked the beginning of it. I like yeah. where he takes his mask off and he says, Michael? That bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah. Sorry, I've got to think back because it was like ages ago. It's like 90 minutes. Well, we had a trip to Tesco's, remember? Like halfway through. Yeah. I've got one thing to say Halloween and hot dogs. Doesn't get any better than that, blonde. I have got one thing. Believe me, I've lived some life. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that. Continue. What about Halloween 2 and burgers? No, Halloween 2 is awful. Well, what happens? I can't remember. <laughs> but it's not Halloween, so... Right, okay. Yeah. So, I think there's one one thing which I, I was thinking about while I was watching it, which I didn't really like. Right. Because I paused it to go get a drink. Right. And came back That wasn't the film's fault, though. No, and I looked at, oh, I I looked at how, t- how long it had been. Yeah. About 50 minutes till the first person got killed. Yeah. Who was the... Who was that? Uh, pff, can't <laughs> remember. No, it was... Uh, it was... Uh, that woman who I called. Well, was she the first person to get killed though? Because no, because the sister did. But we did. It, well, yeah, technically, but also he nicked that costume he was wearing in it as overalls off that bloke. Oh yeah, he was like lying dead in that little thing yeah. by the train. I liked that bit. Why? Did you not? I know I did, but I was about to say why I liked that bit, and I'm interested to know if what you're about to say will be the same. Well, I saw I liked it because it's like a, it's like a gives it a bit more of an origin. Because you know, because you know, like most most horror films, it's just this, like here's Freddy Krueger wearing his sweater. Right, <laughs> it's one of your criticisms of Nightmare on Elm Street. There's no origin story for his it, jumper. Is it? He's a clown. <clears throat> I mean, what, to be what? fair, there isn't any origin story about his client, his jumper. Although apparently, the reason Freddy's jumper is red and green is because is it? Yeah, um, it's because. It's something to do in psychology. Apparently, it's quite difficult for the human eye to put those two colours together. It kind of jars you a little bit. That's why they chose those two colours. But I think there's one bad thing. Is that it doesn't tell you where he got his mask from. Yes, it does. Where? Um, later on, when the two girls are uh, smoking a joint in the car and they pull up outside that shop and their dad's the, the policeman's the sheriff, is one of their dads. What did they say he nicked? I didn't um, get to hear that. Before. A Halloween mask, some rope and a couple of knives. He does say that very clearly. I think he'll be more better because he doesn't really. Well, because only a couple of knives, but he only uses like two. What? Well, yeah, well, it's a couple of knives, isn't it? Yeah. Well, well, technically, he only uses one. I think there's there's another thing which I have to say. Right. Is where um you know when she's discovering all the dead bodies in this room. Yeah. Which I said the uh, what's next? The bathroom's going to be filled with like rats or something. Yeah. Like, there's little dead rats everywhere. Yeah. It's scary. <laughs> Grief. Yeah. So um, so you'd have you have all the dead bodies. I didn't see Bob. Bob was hanging upside down in the cupboard. He was the one that was mm. swinging. Was was it though? Because um, yes. Because I did I did like her spread out. Well, you only killed one man, and that was Bob. Yeah, but I liked I liked him when he was spread out on her on her bed with the massive gravestone mm. over her head. Why why her? I d- I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, and I think it's Laurie, the girl that survived at the end, that he's most interested in. I think the rest are just why padding. I, d- I don't know. 
can't remember. Um, and she's the, related or something in some way or another, cousin um, or something. And I think the other reason, well, other thing I wanted to say. Yeah. Um, does, does he does he have a weakness? I don't know. Because there was a, that bit when he was walking up from school and all the kids were coming out. Yeah. And a kid walked into him and he just like literally just grabbed him, and then just let go of him. So like, wouldn't you just pick him up and just go get out of my way? Because if you if you were that cold hearted that you didn't you didn't even the first person you saw who would get in your way you just go there you go have a knife and uh, yet he got in he got in his way technically he did and yet he just picks him up and just, just doesn't even do that probably just, two answers to that one would be a film knob answer uh, your film critic types exactly. and the other is any of them and the other is my answer um, so the film critic types would be uh, Michael Myers is only interested in Laurie and if needs be killing the other girls in order to get her at her and so this kid is of no interest to him and therefore he lets him go that would be the film knob answer I guess my answer would be that it was a jump scare that we needed and therefore the kid running into Malcolm Myers would be like oh there he is oh no he's been let go and him killing a child in the middle of the day outside the school when there's loads of people around would probably lead to his arrest and therefore end the film the lion's share of 60 minutes early the lady in this right at the end yeah doesn't get killed no Moron. Yep. Moron. Yeah, all right. Because runs out, out of the house. Yeah. Goes goes to all the other houses. Why don't you just stay in the street, where all the where all the people are looking out the windows? I mean, he's not going to kill someone right in the middle of the street, is he? Isn't he? No, because it's quite it's quite obvious, isn't it? He killed that mechanic guy in broad daylight. Yeah, but he, but he was behind that little hill, wasn't it? And there was a train. Again, how much suspense would there be in a film where the climax is Michael Myers chasing Laurie Strode forever down a busy road until eventually he's arrested? Yes, but... Perhaps with the yakety sax Benny Hill theme tune playing over it. (laughs) I'd watch that. That'd be good. Yeah. We could probably make Probably that. not as dramatic as the ending they you, went with. You, but... you, as, you as Michael Myers in your big costume thing, yeah. I dug that out. Fairly sure you're going to say big cock then. <laughs> <laughs> what? You just you get just it out, whip it out. Suddenly, yeah, all right. Yeah, whapping yeah, 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 whapping. Yeah. So the scene that you described, I forgot what it was now. What was it you said you liked? The mechan- oh, yeah. I liked the bit with the mechanic guy in the bush because it sort of felt like you don't need to see Michael Myers pull up in this lay-by next to this bloke's car and kill him and then take his clothes and then drive off. It's just enough that you know that's what happened. And there's like a little sort of, not even in focus, shot of the body as the uh, what's his face Loomis, I think his name is, kind of goes off in the background. Just a bit of subtlety. I think there's things like that that make Halloween... Such a good film because it's just it's subtle. You don't need to see that. Um, what do you think about Bob's death with the pinning up on the wall with the knife? I was thinking about that. Yeah, I like it. Right, but but I, I, there's a lack of blood oh, in this movie. Yeah, what it is? If you start, because I've I've seen a clip from the original, like the new one, the yeah. new one, seeing someone die. There's blood everywhere. It's quite quite gory. Yeah. What is this one? You stab someone, it's like they're made of cotton wool. Go straight through them, no blood anywhere, just have that. But do you need blood to know that he's dead and for that to have the effect on you that his death? You see his feet, you see his toes kind of curling and then they relax, which is says to me that he has expired and therefore he's no longer tensing his toes because yeah, he's dead. You can also know that. Do you need blood if you can see that? Is that is that not a more subtle way of showing that he's dead? Mm, yeah, okay, I'll let you off. I'm not arguing. Well, I am but arguing with you, I, but I, 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 I think it. you coming at it from your generation is maybe your generation expects blood and gore and screaming, and I think I prefer subtlety. But, so, for example, we don't see Michael Myers like full on Michael Myers head, shoulders, knees, and toes <laughs> until. <laughs> quite late in the film all we see is his back or his silhouette or like a little bit of the side of his face you don't see him as a character until quite late on mm. well, right at the end when he's like holding her you can see him fully dressed yeah but that's about the only time and, and all the way through it he's just he's like a ghost I think in the video credits he's called The Shape 
because that's all he is. He's just this shape that you see kind of during the course of the film until the end when you see a lot of him. Did you know? Go on. That um, I'm pretty sure it was him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, that um, the director of it was apparently <coughs> one of one of the Michael Myers. Because I know they had loads of different ones for like different shots. Because some some of them like had like a different sort of voice. Some of them were too tall. Some of them were too short. Really? So, yeah. They, so the fact they had they had like ten Michael Myers or something. The kid or the the man. The man. The loads of different mm. ones. Didn't know that. I'll have to look into that and delete all of that if you're wrong. Okay. Or if you're right. Yeah. If you're right, I'll delete it. I'll say it. <laughs> Little known fact: um, the character Michael Myers in the film was actually played by. Um, yeah, alright, anything else in there that you liked? So you obviously weren't so keen on the Bob thing. What did you think to the bit where when he's put Bob up against the wall and pinned him there? That kind of thing he does where he's kind of cocking his head, looking at him. I, quite I, animalistic. I, I saw that, it's quite cool. Um, music. Probably one of the probably one of the creepiest horror music ever. I think Agreed. Personally, for the end credits of this, you should record yourself playing that. Because mm. I know you haven't done it in a while. Next question. I don't know. I mean, it's it's from what nineteen seventy eight. I think it was made. So it's kind of made the year that I was born. I'm sure it was. But yeah. So you're coming at this as somebody who was born seventy eight, eighty eight, ninety eight, two thousand and eight. So yeah, not far off thirty years after it was made. Is it? You know, how does it stack up against things that you've seen that are horror films that are kind of aimed at? Well, not really horror films because you're twelve. So I think none of them aimed at you. I think but. horror films nowadays are a bit OTT, mm. mostly because I know the new It. I think that's probably the the highest you can probably go. For, probably scary for nowadays. Mm. Sort of. But for, there's this like I worry you're bigging this film up a lot, this, this and you're year. going to be crushed when you actually see it this year. I, I've already seen this the tiniest bit ever. And I've already gotten scared of that. And like, you know how how long it took me to see that Georgie scene. Oh yeah, all right. So yeah, so what did you think of it as a horror film? Because it's not like horror films that you are likely to see now. Because all the films these days are dismemberment. And I think uh, like probably like the horror films in the eighties to the nineties were probably the best sort of times for horror films. Because nowadays they're just OTT. Mm. And back in the day. The 60s. <laughs> back in the, day, 60s. the 60s and 70s. Oh, do you think I am? I'm not saying Back that. in the 60s when you were a kid in the 30s. I didn't say in your day. Oh. I, like, I meant like the Frankenstein days. Back in oh, those what days. What, the like, 1920s? Yeah. The, those weren't even... I didn't even know that Frankenstein was a horror film. I thought it was like a comedy. It's <laughs> not scary. I, yeah, it was interesting that you picked up on the fact that there were loads of leaves on the trees. And yet there were leaves blowing around. And I think I said that it's because it was filmed in the summer. July, um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of just want your... I don't want to steer you in terms of asking you specific questions and you answering them. I'd rather you give me a... It finished. What was your immediate response to it in terms of a film? I think I thought the, the last half an hour, mm-hmm. worth it. So you weren't so keen, but you're not, are you? I mean, but, I've sat with you through films and you're bored because people are talking. He, oh, you're not God, a big fan of exposition. Do you remember Godzilla? The Godzilla was boring because it was about three hours of nothing and then a kick-ass fight at the end. Yeah, and I Which you fell asleep for. <laughs> Brilliant. I, was, I, I had to, as soon as we got home, the wait, <laughs> wait about a month to see that ending. Mm. Sorry about that. It wasn't even that worth it. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as a classic film of its genre that's kind of timeless, did it live up to your expectations? I must have banged on about it over the years. My dress up as Halloween every year. Because why buy a new costume when you've got one that's awesome? Well, I didn't. I think it was it was a lot. It was really worth it that that time waiting mm. to see the and um, there's there's loads of things which I didn't know about him. Like, like I, I didn't know when like he's so heavy breathing, and I th- I think I like about your mask as well, is it because there's like no holes in it at all apart from the eyes and the nose, mm. it, it makes that noise as well. If you could do anything to improve Halloween, the 1978 John Carpenter classic Halloween, what would you do? 
put my beautiful face in it. I think what I'd do. Yeah. Is um, because I like the idea that it's all stealth and stuff. Mm. So like one minute is there, gone. Yeah. Um, but I think um, like, like you know those bits where he's in this car, and then gone. Mm. I think it'll be cool that that he's there, and then suddenly there's like tire marks all the way from where he's gone, because he's gone so fast. But it's gone like. Okay, mm. I add some of those onto it. What about pacing? Because I I got the feeling that the pacing of things was something that you would struggle with. What like how <coughs> how long it actually took? Me. Yeah, because yeah. I think um. <laughs> In the same way, I think you'd find the original Blair Witch Project quite boring. Cause because not a lot really happens for well any of it actually. It's I all. Think, I think if I saw it, I'd be terrified. Hopefully. Because that means you've still got the capacity to enjoy a good horror film. Why well, do you want me to sit down and watch it for like an hour, like two hours? And... I'd be kind of interested to see what you made of it as a film. Maybe we should stick it on the list for Halloween. Yeah, I think my issue with Blair Witch, the new one, was that it's, it's not in your imagination. All of it is just shown to you. Oh, look, here's the CGI witch. Ooh, are you scared? No, I'm not! Because the witch I've got in my head was scarier than the one that you've presented. Whereas the original Blair Witch, you don't see anything. It's all just little noises and little suggestions of things, and that's what makes it frightening. And I think the beauty of Halloween, looking at it again today, is that, you, like I said, you don't see Michael Myers for most of the film, just little glimpses here and there. I think you'd probably have enjoyed it more if he was in it killing people more. I think, you know the bit where he first gets at Bob? Yeah. That should be, like, close to the start. Because right. then you can have more of the chance of them running and him just slowly walking towards them. Mm. Or, cause, cause you know that that scene with her, is like um, over in like two minutes. Cause, cause you spend too much building up for a film that doesn't really need that much build up. So you don't feel like the payoff at the end where the killings and Laurie discovers the bodies and then runs back to the house and has like a sort of confrontation with him. You don't think that as a climax was was enough, yeah, I've, given I've, how long you had to wait for it. You can put loads more into that, like more story. Like you know that dude who was waiting outside the house, his the, house. Yeah, the old guy, the ages. professor. Wouldn't sorry, you've Doctor noticed that car if you've been standing there for about twelve hours now? I think he was. It wasn't where he was at the start. He went to the house where Michael Myers killed his sister at the beginning, and then he started just wandering around the neighbourhood. And that's when he found the car. Yeah, he wasn't stood outside that house all the time. No, he and just sort of missed the car pulling up and Myers getting out. <gasps> and so on. Yeah. It's asthma. It's not a laughing matter. What's the matter with you? It's does sympathy. He? Does he? No. Why does he breathe like that? Because he's got a mask over his face. Oh, yeah. Same I'm... reason I breathe like it on Halloween. Because I can't breathe. <laughs> trick or treat! Sorry. Don't make me do it again. I'm running out of everything. Oh, do you remember that trick or treat time where I actually forgot the words and I said, "Just give me your sweet." <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah, it was like that house over there, like you know, on that side. So, do you feel that the ending was was sort of less gory and dramatic than you expected it to be, given how long it took to come? I don't mind the gore. I think it's just done. Also, the bit when she's in that cupboard, mm. all that time trying to open the door, you just smashed open a fully wooden door. That's just a, like. That's just like a little bit of wood. And it took you forever to get into that. Yeah, but see, this is the thing, and this is why it's interesting to talk to you about things like this. From a grown-up perspective, that's because her sitting in the wardrobe terrified and you're waiting and waiting and waiting for him to get in and get at her, the longer that's drawn out, the more that suspense and tension builds. If she just sort of shut the doors, locked it, and he suddenly burst through, while that would be frightening in its own right, it's not that kind of film. It's a kind of film where you're you're kind of having to endure this kind of rattling and rattling, and then there's a pause before his arm comes through, and then he's trying to get in to get at her. I think I think the, that's what it's about. See, it's all about building up the tension. I think I think if it was me, mm. I'd have her in there, and then be loads of rattling, and then it would stop. Yeah. And they'd smash his arm through, grab her, and pull her straight out. Interesting. And then, and then you just, and then she picks the nearest thing up, picks it up, whacks him around the head with that. So he's on, he's on the floor, and she's like, "Oh, where are the kids? Get out! Get out! Get out!" 
and then she's like all worried and stuff and then he gets up mm. and then like and then you know that there's the balcony there and i think what he should do is like push her off of that but on the way down she like goes like that and grabs onto him and pulls him down as well so they both end up there and then he sees him fall that dude because he's come up the stairs and then he runs to the balcony it's just her on the floor like like that, that ending but hmm interesting I mean, I'll email John Carpenter and suggest it to him. They are making a new one, so maybe they can work that in. I've got other ideas for it. Go on then. Yeah. Well, this is what I want. I'm kind of interested to know if you're not able to necessarily kind of articulate what it was you didn't like about it or what you didn't feel worked. What would you do differently? I think, you know, the mask. Yeah. You know, the, um, the original normal mask. It's got, like, straight hair and everything, or it's now it's all messy and mm. back and stuff. I think what it should do is like gradually in the film, because he's like ch- chasing all these people and killing all these people, it gradually gets all puffy, like mm. that. So it's like that, where it, where it starts off just all straight. So the mask would kind of deteriorate, yeah. as the film goes on, and and like um, I like slowly gets like um, because you know when he stabs, when he stabs that needle, knitting needle mm-hmm. through his neck. Yeah. Apparently in real life that would kill you. Yes. So yeah, googled it. <laughs> I didn't. It was on that YouTube channel. Oh, just a new about it. Say. Oh uh, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Go on, Carol. Um. So I think also they could get like ripped as well. Mm. So so uh, then um like in the next film or in a bit later, he's got like it all stitched up. So there's like stitches all over his mask, or he's just had to put it all back together again. Mm-hmm. And it's literally half falling off. All right, so broad strokes, Halloween, final thoughts. Yeah, it is good. Yeah. So, slash. Yeah. Bad. Right. So a bit of a mixed bag. Yeah, because you can you can have all this opening stuff, introducing all the characters and everything. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to do that. But you can do that. You can do introducing the characters in the first ten minutes. They introduce that lady in ten minutes. Introduce Michael Myers in like two minutes. That other dude didn't even get introduced. <laughs> so hi, I'm here. I looked after him. Let's go. <laughs> That's a fair point. I should. I think you do get introduced. Well, he introduced himself to the policeman at one point. Yeah. Um, that pl- police officer. Who's he? But to be fair, that was outside the costume shop where you apparently weren't conscious during that bit. <laughs> so I just. So you felt that the introduction bit where he kills his sister and stuff was good and the killing of all the people at the end was good but the bit in the middle where the story took place <laughs> was not so good. It's just, you don't need this much. But it does seem to me like your main issue was that you like the beginning and the end but not the kind of <laughs> yawning great bit in the middle where all the characterisation and stuff happens. You introduce all these characters, they die off right at the end. That's, yeah. Yeah, well, I guess there's two trains of thought there. One would be if you took all of that stuff out, your film's 15 minutes. Or, what you know, if you're going to have a character come along and kill all these people, if you haven't met any of these people and don't have any idea of them as people and don't care about them, then their deaths aren't going to have any impact on you. I think you have to do that with characters in order to kind of create some kind of an emotional attachment to them. So when they then get killed, it affects you. If it, if you don't have that, then it, the effect is lost, and then they're just it's just meaningless slayings. But to be honest, yeah, I was so sort of happy when that first lady died. Just saying, sounds quite mean. I was so sort of happy. No, that's fair enough. There are a few characters in films I've watched this week where you're just glad when they finally get off. And uh, I I also I also my, I'm a I'm a fan of this sort of stuff. They do it in Men in Black and all these little things. Yeah. Someone's stuck on the roof. They're walking past and just. Oh, blood. Yeah. Um, Assault on Precinct 13, also John Carpenter, um, has that in it. Yeah, I saw I saw like that. that I think is... you'd probably like the remake more than the original. Because I think, I think sensibilities change and attitudes towards what's horrible and scary and stuff change. And I guess you're an entirely different generation to the people that made that film and who were therefore were the audience. I think the newer Halloween, being more recent, is probably going to be mm. more... Suitable for you as an audience. Mm-hmm. All right, so to wrap it up, Halloween. Would you recommend Halloween to somebody who hasn't seen it? Yes. 
would you recommend that they watch the first bit and then fast forward 10 or so chapters and then just watch the end bit no interesting because you, you know it builds up a bit because there's a bit of build up in it yeah but there is quite a lot of just nonsense which goes on quite a bit where they're in that car I know that you can see him getting followed and stuff but the conversations are pointless that's interesting okay any other things you'd change before I stop um no I think that's it okay Buy all. Come back soon for the next episode of John Bolton's podcast. What horror movie will he be reviewing? Who knows? Who cares? <laughs>